everybody. It's me, your f favorite girl, Lilith. Ooh, I am so sweaty. Ooh, I smell like failure and moldy lemon. Anna, this is your cruelest cosplay yet. Shin Comics has been posting contents for over 10 years between 2013 and 2023. Over the course of this time, he's made several comic series reaching massive viewer acclaim. Though of all this, something was missing. In creating for so long, he started to stagnate in terms of emotional and art progress. However, recently, Shin has overcome a lot with his new series, Public U Art Club. So for someone who's been making comics for over a literal decade, how does one change, or rather, how can one recognize when change needs to be done? Hello, I'm Ryan and I interviewed Shin Comics about this. I wanted to get to the bottom of his inspiration and perseverance in making art. So let's dive on in to see who he is. Shen, or Andrew, is a 31-year-old artist to start off the internet as Alterd, and he posted his first ever comic February 19th, 2013. The joke simply imagines what it would be like to live as Skeletor of the He-Man cartoon series. We all come from humble beginnings. While as an artist, he was always called Shen, he would later change the name of his mainline comic series. He currently resides on the username Shen Comics with an X, because that letter is pretty fucking cool. He'd also worked the likes of the Daily Dot as well as CardHumor.com. This is at a time where people went to niche websites for content as opposed to conglomerate ones like YouTube, Instagram, and Webtoons. The latter, Shen would find his home for the majority of his works. Also, he would have a brief side gig posting at Go Comics, which weirdly enough, the website misattributed his first comic as releasing in 2009? That's weird. I took a hiatus for a while. When I came back, I started getting very experimental with my art. I started doing basically horror stories with pretty minimal illustration. I don't know if the Go Comics audience is overall there for somebody that just like effectively switches series multiple times. As for inspiration, in 2019 interview, he said he was probably inspired by the likes of Ronnie Filia, you know, the creator of Womp. And throughout Shin's life, a lot of his comics would be turned to memes, such as his 2017 work, All Life is Precious. In this one, it has a self-insert saying, well, all life is precious, until the spider says something and Shen kills it. Whereas comic missed the point, which is a similar nature of exploitability. Though the meme version trimmed out a lot of the panels. However, there was one such image that caused a lot of distress for Shen in 2017. My bike got stolen recently was a retelling of a story that happened to him a day before November 12, 2017. After releasing this comic, a lot of the people either missed the point, or just call him a bike cuck for what he said in the comic. Within these panels, he expresses sadness upon losing his bike, but trying to think on the positive side, he hopes the person who stole it is happier than he is sad to lose it. He went with this reasoning due to to the limited options he had at the time, as calling the police would have done nothing. I mean, like, they have other things to worry about? Ooh, your bike got stolen, ooh, what's looking at- no. And the fact, he didn't have a tracker on his bike. I'm sure if he had one back then, he would have called the police to get it, since, well, we can prove it was stolen, and know where it's at. The comic became a source of arguments and meme edits, ending up with the title Bike Cuck, much to his dismay. A few days later, Shen would take a break from comics, but then came back the next day, clarifying what he meant. Less than a month later, he would return to making comics as he used to. I'd asked him about this comic, because it's been about six years since he released it. I guess I've learned that it's not really that big of a deal. You know, there are a lot of people that have made like a cringy thing in the past and people give them shit for it, but you know, they still have successful careers, and so do I. Just not really that big of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like, it's not really that, of course, there are going to be people that have like nothing better to do. And, you know, they're, they're going to want to bring it up like years later. But uh, regardless, you, you know, it's a... Uh, yeah, I, I don't really think about it much at all, to be honest. Though he believes there's actually a comic that's worse that he's made. Some people think that the bike comic is like the worst comic I've ever made. I don't think so. I think there's like one worse. It's the comic in which Shen is like standing on top of like a pillar of hard work. And then there's a guy next to him that's just like floating on a cloud of talent. But the point of the comic was basically like some people just like start out at a very high level. My outlook on this has completely changed because I thought I was kind of of stuck where I was in terms of art because I thought like okay I mean that's just the extent of my like visual memory some people have better visual memory some people have better like dexterity some people just seem to have a better sense of 3D when they're drawing to some degree that is true like of course there are people that are going to be like 10 years old and already quite good substantially better than most adults and of course there are going to be people that can like see something once and then they can try. I'm neither one of those people, but at the same time, I am super not stuck. I so regret not having been practicing all these years as much as I am practicing now. Because if I had been, oh, I would be so good. I mean, I'll continue until I actually am that, uh, you know, however long it takes. 
but uh, my outlook on this has completely changed. But there's also another comic that caused some issues. The first week of 2018, he attempted to fast between Monday and Sunday, less of a health reason, more so of a test of endurance and patience. In doing so, he documented his process each day in comic form. There was a comic a while back in which I fasted for a week. I genuinely did do that. I did it, in fact, a few years in a row that I fasted for the first week of the year. And this was like a complete fast, only water. Uh, and I made a comic about my experience doing it. Then a friend of mine tried to do it too, but it turns out that they had some kind of issue with like sugar in their body. And so they just couldn't do it. It occurred to me at that time that like, I'm free to do this, but I wasn't doing it because somebody advised me to. I was doing it as a test of willpower and discipline. And that's pretty much it. Should I really have like posted that comic like it's some kind of like fun thing to do? Probably not. There's no health benefits from just like not eating for a week. Some people, especially if they were younger and more impressionable, likely to emulate that? Probably. So that's kind of like the type of stuff that I have to look out for. I have to kind of like sanity check myself and be like, hey, is there an obvious way that somebody might re interpret this or react to this? that might be harmful. When we get into the non-obvious ways somebody might interpret and react to that, I used to be really hung up on that stuff. I'm not anymore. That's just gonna happen. There's nothing I can do. It's out of my control. And in 2022, Shen talked about not wanting to do harm with his comics. While it was mainly in reference to Instagram taking down his posts, there was a broader sense to what he meant. On his Tumblr page, he's listed that since a decade ago, he's had a mission of making you, the audience, happy. To bring humor into the world is a goal he wants to consistently achieve, but he was worried about upsetting people with what he creates. Over the years, he's made several comic series. Starting with the former, he's made one-arc stories with the likes of the Little Firefighter, My Life as a Skeleton, Eden, each telling a finite story that people can read in one go. Except for Shen Comics. Not not the username, but like the actual comic that's, that's the name of the comic, you know? It was just a simple slice of life comic Comic, the self insert that came to a close as he scaled down to social media at the time. It was less of a narratively driven series. Hmm, I think that like Garfield, but person. As for contemporary series, is Living with Herself. It's a story that revolves around a 20-something who lives with different versions of himself from different points of his life. Though he had recently stopped writing and doing art for the comic, we'll get a bit into that later. As for Blue Chair, this would be his most recognizable series thus far, with nearly half a billion views on webtoons. In fact, Blue Chair has recently reached over 1,000 updates and is still counting. This comic actually was the first US original on webtoons to reach 1,000 updates, so it's quite an achievement. Perhaps one day a print of the comic can come out, much in the case of emotions explained with buff dudes from 2018. With over 748,000 followers on Twitter, 1,900,000 followers on Instagram, and 1,400,000 on Webtoons, needless to say, he's quite the popular artist, even making it on the likes of Wikipedia. Woo! However, with all these comics, resides a lot of the same, simplistic characters and little to no backgrounds. In all the years Shin has been making comics, this is what he is known for and what he's been used to. That is, until he created something that pushed the boundaries of his artistic abilities, that being Public UR Club. Opting for an emphasis on lore and world building, the characters have names and dynamics not seen before in his works. It's also a comic series that falls under the mature rating. So scandalous, Shen. Following the likes of Anna, Sophia, Lilith, and Beatrix, they hang out at the university's art club with their sponsor Miss G. Within the first arc, the gang has to pay back the school for breaking a statue, with many jokes to grain the likes of Lilith, much to the audience's dismay. Within the mainline story, we also have flashbacks as well as non-canon memes to break up the pace of the series, such as Lilith Fallen or going Super Saiyan. As for making it based around the occult and general themes of Eldritch Creature, this was due to his growing love of horror films. Even the likes of ARGs has sparked his interest in this manner of storytelling. Prior to the series, he's created many one-off comics with a more painted style, such as his 2022 comics about the mysterious neighbor and Magic Teapot. I suppose his backroom posts too? Well, those are more comedic than scary. The series is unlike anything he's made before, as it has a fan base more than an audience. But what do I mean by this? Well, for a lot of his other comics, he has a following for the relatability of said jokes. One can say, I love this joke, I'll follow this guy, for the likes of Blue Chair, but seldom is the character the selling point. The opposite can be said for Public ER Club. With the series revolving around a set of characters with distinct personalities, a fan base gathers around them and gets invested in the story that they tell. Even when I asked my fans about Shen Comics when they think of him, some people talked about his current works with one person specifically mentioning Lil Off. This came as a surprise to Shen as he wasn't used to this kind of reaction. I, I just, I'm very fascinated by, you know, people on social media behaving in a way that I'm not used to. And I'm very used to like audience behavior. I'm not used to fandom behavior. I'm not used to people just like seeing a character and being like, oh, like I, I love that character. Not just like, I love the punchline of this comic or something like that. 
I, I'm fascinated by that. I'm trying to, you know, get to it, uh, you know, tooth and nail. Obviously, I need to become a better artist to do so, and that's part of my motivation for practicing art every day. The comic in of itself has actually pushed him outside of his comfort zone when it comes to art. As you've seen on screen, a lot of what he's drawn has loads of no backgrounds, meaning he has loads to worry regarding a three-dimensional space. But in creating a narrative, having backgrounds is pretty important. You know, considering you need a place for your characters to stand around, of course. So with this series, he has to think not only of that, but also for the locations he has to draw for said story. Where's the school located? Who works at the school? What are the students are there? These are some questions that are very new when creating a narrative story. Well, there are inklings of it with living yourself, never fully fleshed out the backgrounds or space within the work. And he's always wanted to write something where people can know the characters themselves, rather than just move on from a singular punchline. As mentioned before, his prior works have garnered wide appeal due to the vague relatability to it. In the case of Blue Chair, a lot of his older comics revolve around the personification of ideas. Either in sadness, anger, or even tiredness, it was Shen reacting to said concepts. While one can relate to the general statement, it's hard to really get attached to what's being seen. The former one of Live With Yourself shows off his prior ideas of what it meant to create a serialized series. Beginning in 2017, while he had been creating comics for four years, he hadn't had time to explore what it means to improve, as the original run that was drawn and written by him lasted less than a year before hiring someone else to work on it. So with this narrative, it was a task he wasn't able to take up, this required a lot more panels than he was used to. This is mixed in with the fact that it requires backgrounds. And since the transition of power, Shen leaves all the residuals to those who currently work on it. And so being overwhelmed by work for his comics, it took a lot of time to understand what it means to create and improve in an online space, which is how he was able to make his new form series. You know, usually my comics are just generic guys that usually don't even have clothes or hair or anything like that. They're just generic guys interacting with each other. And something that I realized, and this was kind of like a painful realization, was that I am developing a following with those types of comics, but it's not a fandom. People know the comics. People at conventions will be like, oh, I I've seen those comics. Comics, I'm gonna go up to that. Don't get me wrong, like that absolutely has its own merits, so that sort of like broad appeal. It is also kind of a cage. And the cage is that when you have that type of following, everything you make has to be self-enclosed. The the comics all have to be understood entirely by themselves. They have to be short, they have to be quippy, they have to be one page. They can't have too much text. It gets a little bit tough, you know, that like staying within those restrictions and not getting incredibly, incredibly bored. You know, I, I definitely couldn't do it, even though it was in my best interest business wise. So that's why I decided to try to do Public U Art Club. An issue that comes with consistently drawing on a deadline is finding the time for improvement, but also what it means to actually improve. Getting better at art isn't a vertical scale, as it can often start horizontally. But what do I mean by this? Over the years, I've been making content, and I've whittled down what works and what doesn't work in terms of my presentation. I actually made a prior video about Shen that showcases a lot of the earlier mistakes I had with older videos. Besides the fact, for some reason, I really liked the what aspect ratio, I opted for several sets to shoot one video. What came with this was me having to move the camera to three corners of a room and relighting each set. In doing so with limited resources, I'd cause extremely ugly sets to be made, and a lot of time wasted in preparing each scene. And in doing so, caused me to feel tired when filming for the day. Over time, I would cut this down to two sets, the main one, then a green screen one for a singular video, then to the singular one you see today. Even the former use of two camera angles caused a lot more footage to be stored. When I was for unboxing videos, it didn't add too much for my content. All this being done as an attempt to find my aesthetic, or style, with video format. I would put this as an example of horizontal improvement, as the goal of filming was the same, but the destination of how I got there was different. The decision to improve was not a one and done thing, as it's not often something one can put out from oneself and understand what really needs to be changed. As it isn't always clear from the outset for a singular perspective to understand what you as a person need to change. Sometimes it's a want or need to accomplish something. As for me, it was just the idea of cutting down the workflow. This applies to Shen as he dives into horror and it gave him better understanding of narratives that he otherwise wouldn't have known about prior. Also mixed in with his community driven comics, pushed him to try things he wouldn't have thought to before. With his mainline series Blue Chair, it doesn't require him to learn how to make backgrounds or consistency per frame. So it was an external concept that pushed him to try something new. This rather isn't a stagnation of progress, but rather an unbeknownst comfortability in your own works. In wanting to pursue horror as a medium, he wanted to push himself and try something new with his 2020 comics. While the reins of living with myself has gone to another team, having the chance to work on Public U Art Club has given him the push to create in ways he couldn't have before. Within the series, he cannot solely rely on the backgroundless relatableness of his prior comics. As of telling a story, more has to be done to create the world that the characters reside in, and that work has been recognized by 
this fan base. I'd actually seen a Loaf cosplay in my timeline, and it's probably the first occasion I've seen someone cosplay one of his works. This comic is a lot different compared to his prior works, as he often applied a singular act upon the narratives. With the story being done for the simplistic characters, there really isn't any need to continue the series after the first arc. When asked about the 1000 updates of his blue chair comic, he's more interested in the content of said comic rather than the numbers itself. I, I don't really like going by those metrics that much just because I don't really care that much about quantity, you know? It, like, if I were to stumble upon a series with a thousand updates, and believe me, I have before, I've tried to read questionable content, for example, from the very beginning, then I, I wouldn't say, like, the length of the series is something that's going to, like, <laughs> is going to appeal to me is going to like is going to convince me to read it uh, i care way more about like the quality of the episodes like how can i improve my art my writing and unfortunately if audience response is anything to go by if like the number of comments and stuff which is probably the metric i pay attention to most is anything to go by like the audience for it has been on the decline. It's like, yeah, it's it's over a thousand episodes, but it feels a little bit pathetic to be like celebrating that if the audience is on the decline. Even though I think the comics are better than ever, but I, I don't, I don't, maybe I'm just out of touch. I don't know, <laughs> but I, I feel like I'm making like some pretty decent comics there. As for new mediums like merch and animation, I talked to them about some of these aspects. For the latter, he used to have a store called ShenStuff.com, where he used to sell merchandise of his character. I actually have the stuffed version himself, as well as a poster, about motivation. However, not having any more interest in promoting, he has since closed it, purchasing the stock at production value. With his merchandise on his hands, he intends to sell it at conventions until the remainder is gone. For Public QR Club, rather than dedicated merch store, I can foresee a limited run from Utunes or Makeship for the character. As for animation, Shen has had offers to turn his works into shows, however he since declined them all, so there won't be any official public UR Club animations. Well, kind of. And sometimes, it, you know, sometimes it won't be like a studio reaching out to me, it'll be just like an individual and being like, hey, can we turn this into like a voice acted animatic on YouTube? Which is honestly what I prefer, because it involves way less formality. I think it's just as funny and just as good. You know, a lot of like the studio animation these days, it can be pretty like static looking and cheap sometimes, right? So I'd almost rather be like, hey, you're you're just like a random goober that's probably like, I, I don't say that in like a um, derogatory way, <laughs> by the way. You're just like a random goober that's still like in college. Uh, he hell yeah. Like, of course I want to work with you more than I want to work with some, like, weird studio that's going to get me, like, all mired in, you know, in a weird contract that probably gives them, like, merchandising rights and probably gives them, like, some rights to the series itself. No, I just want to work with, like, a, a random person. And I look forward to the dubs of his comics. So for extending past his prior creative limits, this newly formed comic gave him new lease on life he could have never thought of before. Over the past 10 years, Shen has changed as an artist, from what he wants to create alongside what he wants to do in real life, such as going to bed at a more reasonable time from 11 to midnight, rather than the previous 4am he's accustomed to. I look forward to where he goes with the series as well as the next one. If this is the start of what a new Shen can produce, we're on our way up, and while the mountain may be hard to climb, getting to the top is inevitable, no matter how long it takes. And hopefully by then, low with makes an actual friend. Pray for her. Hey, uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget to support me on everything. Literally, everything. My Twitters, YouTube channels, and Patreon. Also, go check out my animated podcast, Assault is JJ. Until next time, keep on drawing, and don't forget to have fantastic. <laughs>